Hey everybody, Ashy here with a follow-up to my last video where I put together the Roadcaster Pro 2 in a dual PC streaming setup. And a question came up as far as the alerts in stream, like subscriber or you know, gift this alerts, things like that. Where do those come from if you have the PC audio stick. muted? Um, as you recall, we had the, a separate music channel so we could control the music volume, and we muted the PC audio so that we wouldn't be duplicating the same um, same audio on two different channels being sent out to the stream. And stream alerts go through the PC audio. So what do we do? Um, so there's a, a few ways to address this, actually. The easiest one, honestly, the easiest one is if you're using stream elements or if you're using uh, stream labs, then it's pretty straightforward to uh, just enable a separate fader with those alert boxes. Now, if you're not, then there's a couple of other ways to approach it. One way would be to use something like a beacon mix or a mix create, and then you can have some um, fine tuning control over all of your audio sources on your streaming PC. So if you got another 150, 200 bucks you want to throw into your uh, streaming setup and have that other piece of hardware, then go for it. You know, that works. Very elegant solution. Uh, and gives you another toy to play with. If you don't want another toy to play with, if you don't want to spend the money, you can also do this with a uh, voice meter. Now it's important that you use uh, voice meter banana, not the not voice meter. Voice meter doesn't have the two virtual inputs. Voice meter banana does have two virtual inputs. Voice meter potato has too many inputs. <laughs> so I so unless you uh, unless you really want to do a bunch of crazy stuff with voice meter potato, then uh, just get voice meter banana. Um, less stuff to look at and it's a really easy configuration all right and lastly what i'm going to do is uh, i didn't really go into anything within obs specifically configuring audio sources within obs uh, so i'm going to go through a basic configuration of a new scene from scratch which shows how to set all of this up exactly like i uh, had it configured uh, doing that from scratch so if you have familiarity with obs if you already know what you're doing in there you can skip over this part just click uh, forward you've got bookmarks in the description just click forward to the uh, to the audio configuration section and you'll be good to go but if you're looking for additional help with obs and making sure this all gets configured with the right sources here you go all right so assuming we've got everything configured per the previous video on the roadcaster pro 2 we got our pc set up we got the roadcaster pro 2 all configured we got all the input output routing done all right let's check out obs and how we would get this going if we had never done it before, brand new from scratch. Okay, so here's OBS. Let me, uh, we're gonna start by just starting from scratch. We'll create a new scene. We'll call it my uh, Diablo stream because everybody loves Diablo. All right, so we got a brand new Diablo stream. I added the, uh, this display for illustration purposes, but we'll show you how to add the game. All right, so by default, we've got our microphone, we've got our PC audio. Okay, PC audio is playing Amazon Music right now. Can you hear the background music there? Okay, I'm going to mute that for now. Let's add our main mix from our Roadcaster Pro 2. So we need an audio input capture. And I want to add existing. We'll add a new one. We'll call it uh, Roadcaster Pro 2 Mix. And our device is Roadcaster Pro 2 Main Stereo. And there we go. Now we can hear that already, right? So I already have the game running. In the background over there so that's why we've got audio so we've got our roadcaster pro 2 mix let me mute that for now let's add our music right so we want to separate our music nice. currently coming in pc audio we want to separate that too out uh to its own so we're going to do application audio capture and we're going to call this amazon music even though i already have one i'll rename it this so we make sure we're adding a new one and our window is going to be amazon music Are you ready? We've got Amazon Music. Are you ready? All right, we'll turn that down and we'll mute that for now. All right, what else do we need? We need our Discord. All right, let's add Discord. Another application audio capture. And this is going to be Discord. I'll just call it Discord 2 since I already have one. And we're going to select Discord. Now we've got Discord, okay? And uh, here, just let's uh, I'll uh, mouse over here, make sure she works. So you'll hear me talking out my mic and then coming back in from Discord is what this is. One, one, check, check. One, one, 
two, two. And it, and it, all right, so we got Discord. I'll mute that guy too. All right, so we got we got all the audio sources we need. Uh, what we don't have is a game. So, oh, you know what? Let's do it before we do a game. All right, this, the music that's playing is also playing out the desktop. And what I did in the previous video is I mute the PC audio so that we're not playing the same audio out of the out of two different sources. What's going to happen here is that if you have alerts, you know, subscription alerts, donations, whatever, in your stream. That alert box audio is not going to play because that's going to by default come in PC audio. If you're using Streamlabs or if you're using Stream Elements, it's really easy to do. Okay, so let's just say we have an alert box. Okay, so an alert box is a browser source. And I'm just going to add the existing one I have so I don't have to recreate it. Uh, Alright, so there's my uh, alert box. And what's going to happen by default is it's going to want to play out PC audio. Okay, so PC audio normally it will be playing music if we play music. So... Um, let me just show you the alert box right now and where and, and to show you where it plays. So if I were to go over here and test my alert box. There you go. There's the alert. There we go. There's your alert audio playing out PC audio. So if we mute PC audio, we're not going to get our alerts. So how do we fix that? Real easy. Again, if you're using Stream Elements or using Stream Labs, they allow you to just go in the properties or double click it. And you can say control the audio via OBS. Okay, and once you do that, you get a separate source, uh, audio source and fader for your alert box. So now the audio won't play out of your desktop audio by default. It's going to play out of this alert box. So if we test it again, we still get the audio, we get the alert, and it's right there. Okay, so that's the easy way to do it. Uh, in a little bit, I will talk about the more complicated ways to do it. But to kind of finish this up, let us add our video source for our game. And we'll be done. So we'll do video capture device. And I'm just going to select the existing monitor I have with the game on it. And there we go. And there's Diablo. And here is Diablo Audio. Oops. Use my mouse. Okay. So we've got... A Wanderer Returns. Game audio, alert box audio, PC audio muted, microphone audio, Discord audio, music audio. All separated, all ready to roll. From there, have a hell of a lot of fun streaming and have a hell of a lot of fun with OBS. Okay, now if you're not using Stream Elements alert boxes or Streamlabs alert boxes, maybe using something else, or for some reason you don't want to use you know, this option to uh, control the audio directly like that in OBS, maybe you have some other things on the desktop you want to make sure other desktop audio gets out to your stream, we still want to make sure we can separate our music from the PC audio. So um, to do that, we can use voice meter banana. Okay, and it's not um, it's not that complicated. It's actually pretty easy kind of default right out of the box settings in voice meter. You don't really have to tweak anything in it. Um, and it's just one other piece of software you have to download. And you just have to change your configuration slightly and what you're pointing to what to get that to work. And uh, I'll show you how to do that right now. All right. So let's go to um, a browser and I'm basically starting over. I, I uninstalled voice meter so I can go through this kind of step by step. So if we just search for uh, voice meter, uh, banana. And we get the VB audio software and we'll download the EXE and we'll run it. And then we have to reboot. So we'll do that and then we'll come back. All right, we are back. So now what we want to do is fire up voice meter banana. All right, and before we get into the configuration, we're going to uh, just make shit a couple of options here. First off, we want to um, make sure we run on Windows Startup. We want this to start up every time. Okay, so we have that. And uh, by default, it will um, kind of show this big screen. I always say, uh, I always have it load into the system tray. 
Now, even though I uninstalled it and reinstalled it, it, I didn't delete the previous configuration files I had, so it's kind of already set up. But let me show you what I did here. So you have, um, first I'll explain this. You have two virtual inputs that are going to get sent to a hardware output. So the first thing we're going to do on A1, channel A1, is we're going to set our hardware output to our Rodecaster Pro 2 main stereo. That's where we want all of our audio going out. That's going to send um, what comes into these virtual inputs out to the Rodecaster. Okay, that's um, so we set that up. Now, what do we want to do with these virtual inputs? We want to separate our music and our desktop. So by default, it isn't going to say this when you install voice meter. So what I did is I right clicked here and I changed this one to music and then oops, press enter. And then I right clip here and I change that one to desktop. Uh, I make sure these are all pointing to A1, which by default, all of these should just be pointing to hardware output A1. That's all the configuration you have to do in voice meter banana. It's that easy. Okay. So voice meter banana is done. We'll minimize that. Now all you have to do is on your desktop machine, you're going to change your output, which was previously Pro 2 main stereo. We're going to change that to go to voice meter input, the first, uh, which is voice meter VAIO. Okay. So we have that. Again, if we look at voice meter, which is in our system tray here, voice meter VAIO is going to take our desktop audio. All right. Okay. And for our music app, then, whether it's Spotify or Amazon Music or iTunes, whatever, we're just going to open the app up. And we're going to find where we select the output. And instead of using our previous uh, Roadcaster Pro 2 main, we're going to switch that to voice meter aux input. Okay. Save that. All right. So now we have our music pointing to voice meter aux. And we have our voice meter or have our desktop sounds, which would include alerts pointing to uh the regular VAIO input, okay? And that output is the same. So I'm going to go to Roadcaster Pro Main Stereo, but this is going to allow us then to um, control these differently within OBS. So let's see that. So in OBS, we still have the same sources we had before. We haven't changed any of that. But now, when we play a desktop sound, we get that in PC Audio, as we expect. So if you previously had alerts that would... Uh, show up in PC Audio, they're still going to be there. And then music should no longer play over PC Audio. It should be playing over its own separate Amazon Music channel. Let's try it out. There we go. It's as easy as that to set up Voice Meter Banana to separate those two out. Thanks for watching. Please hit like. See you later or I will see you on another time. Peace.